Every year, thousands of human remains are found in the United States. And in one of every four instances, authorities can't identify the body. That's starting to change. I'm Dave Killen, co-host of The Unidentifieds, a new limited series podcast from The Oregonian and Oregon Live. We go deep into several cold cases and explain the science that's helping experts give these long-forgotten people their names back. Look for The Unidentifieds after you've finished listening to this podcast. Subscribe to The Unidentifieds on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, y'all. I'm Lita Gore, filling in today for Ike Morgan for Today's Down in Alabama. The name Rankin Fight probably doesn't mean a whole lot to people in Alabama nowadays, but he actually holds a unique place in state history. Fight was a lawyer in Hamilton, Alabama, and served in the State House and Senate. His unique spot in history comes from a call made at 2 p.m. on February 16, 1968. It was at that time that Fight made the nation's first 911 call, placing it from the mayor's office in Haleyville, Alabama. A specially designated phone rang inside the Haleyville police station where it was picked up by U.S. Rep. Tom Bevel, who answered with a simple hello. There was no emergency, but the call signaled a big win for some bragging rights. In early February 1968, Bob Gallagher, president of the Alabama Telephone Company, read about a decision involving AT&T to establish a national emergency number, 911. Upset that independent carriers such as his Alabama company were left out of the decision, Gallagher decided to rush and beat AT&T to the punch. The company picked Haleyville because it was already working in the area, so it was easy to install a new system. It took less than a week. And just like that, the nation's first 911 call was made, and a piece of Alabama history went into the record books. Now, Haleyville holds a 911 festival each year, and the next one is planned for June 2nd and 3rd. Rankin Fight died in 1980. His spot in Alabama history, however, lives on. Now let's look at what's going down in Alabama. A plan to do away with the sales tax on food in Alabama is moving ahead. The bill from Rep. Danny Garrett of Trustful would cut the state's 4% sales tax on food to 3%, effective September 1. It would go down to 2% on September 1, 2025, but that reduction could be delayed if projections indicate slow growth in the taxes that support education. The measure moves on to the full House of Representatives as soon as Thursday. Proponents say Alabama's tax on food hurts low-income families who struggle to pay for other necessities like housing and medicine. Alabama is one of only three states that does not offer a reduced tax rate on food. Belk is closing an Alabama location. After 18 years, Belk is shutting down its Selma store. Associates will be offered the chance to interview for positions in other stores. And from now until closure date on June 5th, everything in the store is 60% off. Belk has 19 other locations in Alabama. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey isn't sold on the idea of widening I-65. Ivey is criticizing recent pledges by Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth and a few other GOP lawmakers to add more lanes to Interstate 65 through Alabama. She said it was something aimed at making easy headlines while saying she operates in the bounds of reality when it comes to road construction planning. Instead, she defended the Rebuild Alabama program created in 2019 through a gradual 10 cent per gallon increase in the state's fuel tax. That program has provided $200 million for the widening of the interstate for more than seven miles between Calir and Alabaster. Ivy agreed I-65 needs to be widened, but said there were transportation needs all over the state. I agree we should widen 65, but I operate in the bounds of reality, and I recognize needs in all parts of the state including the county roads and city streets that Alabama citizens used every day to get to work, to school, and to the grocery store, Ivy said. That's all we have for today. Check with AL.com throughout the day for what's going down in Alabama. 